Now, the next speaker, Meg Ullman, is from uh, Victoria, a group called Relocalise Hepburn. Uh, so over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Kit. And thank you, Robin. That was very exciting to hear what your group is up to. Um, hello, my name is Meg and I live in Dalesford in central Victoria on beautiful Jarra country. And Jarra means people of the land. So we take that um, as a directive to be people of this land. So it's something that we take very seriously and we try to live honourably and respectfully on this land in a carbon positive way, in ways that people have been living on this land for thousands of years. I'm one of the co-facilitators of Hepburn Relocalisation Network. And the Hepburn in the title refers to Hepburnshire uh, and Dalesford is part of Hepburnshire. And um, I'm, from here on in, I'm going to call it HRN, Hepburn Relocalisation Network for short. So Hep, um, HRN was started 18 years ago in 2005 by Sue Dennett and Maureen Corbett. And in case people don't know, Sue Dennett is the partner of David Hongren, who's the co-originator of the permaculture concept. And they live three kilometers away uh, down the hill in Hepburn. And just uh, as an aside, um, it's three kilometers, only three kilometers, but it's such a big difference. The microclimate, they're about six weeks ahead of us in terms of things fruiting and flowering. Mm -hmm. So I say six, I say three kilometers, but that's actually a very big difference of six weeks. Um, so I moved to uh, this area from Melbourne just as HRN was starting nearly 20 years ago. And I saw a poster for a film, a local film night, and it was a really interesting poster. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm moving to a new town. I'd really like to meet people. So I went along where I found out a bit more what HRN was about and I had never heard of permaculture before I moved to this region I didn't know what transition was I didn't know what um, regenerative living or regenerative agriculture was so I was in a very very steep learning curve so I'm very thankful that I went into the library on that day and saw that interesting poster and HRN uh, back in those days was having lots of film nights and one of their um, their their ethoses was to only show films that were really positive. Like permaculture, it's positive solutions based. Yes, we all know the doom and gloom aspect of you know, what's happening in the world, but to really focus on the positivity and the joy, I was immediately attracted to that. So I started going along to um, all of the HRN events. They had local food gatherings. I'd never really thought about what local eating, what seasonal eating meant. So that was a great introduction to actually embody that that lo locality and the seasonality. And of course, when you eat the food that's grown locally, you become local, you become embedded and you become emplaced to the place that you're living. So again, bringing that back to Jara country, which is people of this land. Um, also, one of the things that I loved that HRN was doing, they had um, seasonal celebrations. They had harvest festivals in the autumn. They had um, summer and winter solstice gatherings and equinoxes, equinox gatherings. And the whole idea of just living and celebrating according to the seasons was a very beautiful initiation for me to, to living in this way. So I was very grateful to have that introduction. Um, HRN also used to organise um, different speakers to come and speak in the town hall. The first speaker who I saw for HRN was back in 2008 and it was Roberto Perez, who's a Cuban permaculturist. And just to hear that whole families were supporting themselves by just the food that they could grow on their balcony and that you'd go to someone's house and open up their kitchen cupboards and it would be full of guinea pigs that they were raising for meat. And just that whole concept was just mind blowing. I was a, a girl from the suburbs of Melbourne who, you know, I went to the supermarket when I needed to eat. So this whole idea of eating guinea pigs 
um, and growing food on your balcony to sustain yourself and your family was, yeah, a big wake up call for me. And three things that he said that night have really stuck with me and have been like my my guiding uh, principles, apart from the three permaculture ethics. Um, but another another three things that he said, um, he said how important it is to grow your own food, catch your own water, say hello to your neighbours. And just those three things have really stuck with me. It's just so simple, isn't it? Just grow your own food, be in touch with your soil, make your soil, have a, have a relationship with your soil and catch your own water, be responsible for your own resources. And of course, say hello to your neighbour, community building, community interconnectedness and community sufficiency. And that word I will come back to um, a little bit later on, that term community sufficiency. Um, another thing that HRN uh, did, which I also loved and went along to, they had lots of skill sharing workshops. So they had um, most notably um, one of the things that I loved, I had a shoe, a shoe making workshop and it was for a whole weekend. And we made shoes and we, we just learned a very, very humble and very ancient skill. And if you think about shoes, if you think about energy descent, if you think about collapse, shops are closed. We, we can make clothes. We can weave out of nettle fibre or flax. We can catch animals for fur. But shoes, I feel like that's a skill that is, such, is so essential. Um, especially up here in the cold, the cold mountains. Um, so HRN, I just knew that it was something that I wanted to be associated with, that it was a community group that I, that whose values were uh, in line with my own. So I became one of the facilitators um, probably about a decade ago. And it was around about that time that I got into fermenting food and making we grew a whole row of cabbages and I didn't know what to do with them so I looked online and discovered the joy and the art and the magic and the wonder of sauerkraut so I made it a couple of times and then was invited to our local neighborhood center uh, to teach sauerkraut making so I was making sauerkraut I was making kimchi I was making kvass I was <laughs> pickling everything that I could get my hands on um, making lots of alcohols and cider and mead and then I started making cheeses I felt like I really needed a group of people around me that I could troubleshoot with and so I started the Dalesford Culture Club um, and under the HRN banner um, and we were, we were uh, a group of fermenters uh, of all different experiences and all different backgrounds and all different ages and um, we team up with local growers who grow us cabbages and then we have community crowding days in our town hall with about 80 to 90 people all pounding our cabbages at the same time. Um, we uh, have local pickling days where, again, local, grower, local growers grow us gherkins and then we have these big pickling sessions and really trying to have a priority on doing things together, making something that you might think is a bit of a chore to do it collectively and to do it joyously with a real focus on food, food resilience and a food commons. Um, uh, I met a really wonderful herbalist and so she and I, um, again under the HRN banner, came up with Wild Fennel. It's a Hepburn Herbal Club and it's a free, and so with Culture Club, it was a free monthly uh, fermenting group. And Wild Fennel was also a free monthly herbal medicine group. And we made tinctures, we made balms, we had sessions on um, making a first, a medicinal first aid kit, again, with a real emphasis on local, on seasonality. If there was lots of calendula in abundance one month, then we had a whole session on calendula and all the different properties. Um, what are these plants trying to teach us? How do we have a relationship? How do we deepen our relationship uh, to Jarrah Mother Country? Um, it was before that, uh, before then, 
pardon me, um, that I started to be involved um, in one of the people who set up the Dalesford Community Food Gardens. So we have, we had about six at that time. Now we have three uh, community food gardens scattered around the town. And they're really trying to um, encourage people to come along. Um, there are no, um, no gates, nothing is under lock and key, no private property, nothing is... Um, is sectioned off it's all just a free-for-all and so you come in and you can take produce we just ask that none of that produce is sold um, so there are cafes they like to drop off their um their are you trying to give me Gloria are you trying to okay <laughs> one minute <laughs> okay thank you um I'll just run quickly the other groups that uh, we have under the HRN banner so we under the HRN banner. So we have Dalesford Culture Club, the fermenting group. We have Wild Fennel, the herbal medicine group. We have Dalesford Community Food Gardens. We have a natural beekeeping group that also meets uh, once a month. We have Hepburn Seed Savers, which is a free seed library. And the seeds are available um, at different locations uh, throughout the town. We have seed saving workshops. Um, we have the annual Terra Nullius breakfast, which is happens on uh, Australia Day, uh, January 26th. How do we take responsibility and own up to the history uh, of this land um, in a, uh, a grieving as well as a celebratory way? Um, there are a couple of other things, but I won't go into them. But I just wanted to um, just say that everything we run is, is free, is non-monetary. We just see that a lot of the issues of this world are to do with uh, capitalism, particularly neoliberalism. So how do we move away from that? We do it by encouraging people to be part of a gift economy, the sharing economy, the swapping economy. Um, for us, that's been a real priority. And also just going back to that term, community sufficiency as opposed to self-sufficiency, which is all about the self, which is sort of a prepper ideology. Uh, this is really encouraging people to uh, think more collectively. Um, I could go on. We have a blog site, which is relocaliseheadburn.blogspot.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Um, thanks so much. <laughs>